November is just around the corner, and that means the 16th Annual National Podcast Post Month is fast approaching. Hi, I'm Jennifer Navarrete, founder of NAPPOD POMO, and I'm inviting you to join the 30-Day Global Podcasting Challenge. Whether you're a newbie looking to start your first podcast or a seasoned pro seeking inspiration, NAPPOD POMO is the perfect place to experiment and try new things. Visit NAPPODPOMO.org to learn more. See where podcasting can take you this November during National Podcast Post Month. Mission Hope. Inspirational stories of faith and triumph. Life's many upheavals, sharp curves, twists and turns, the challenging circumstances coming right at you are nonstop. The inner wars within are outside your control and feel overwhelming. You feel alone, and the seemingly endless battles rage on. You feel like you have lost all hope and faith, questioning, Why me? Why now? How can I handle another blow? The answers you're seeking are in this collection of 20 uplifting stories in this book. Within its golden pages, from the deep confines of their hearts and souls, these extraordinary authors have opened up and are here to assist you in navigating the deep, daunting, and dark waters that you are facing. Each story is unique in its experience, but similar in the fact that through everything presented to them in life, these authors have found the way back to success, peace, and joy through hope and faith. These authors have turned tragedy into tranquility once again. Now, they are here to empower you to shift from what once was fear and failure into the future of your dreams. They offer as a gift to you the freedom to choose your destiny. Now, it's time to turn the key and walk through the door. Hear from the authors themselves as they share their journey and story with you here on Living the Next Chapter. Okay, everyone, welcome back to Living the Next Chapter. We're talking to amazing authors, part of Shar Murphy's newest book. Book two is out. Everyone's excited. I'm excited. Uh, And I get a chance to talk to great authors all apart around Mission Hope's next book in the series. And uh, Dobby's are with me today. And Dobby's going to be sharing about her chapter. She's got an amazing story and um, an amazing community around her, loving and supporting her. Uh, And I'm excited to have her on the podcast. Dobby, welcome to Living the Next Chapter. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it greatly. Um, first time guest on a podcast. Come on. It is. This is my first time. I'm excited and nervous both. But Okay. Frank, <laughs> tell her what she's won. Frank? <laughs> no, I don't. There's no one here to give you. Sorry. There's no prize. I'd love to give you a prize. That would be the great. The prize is being here. And thank you oh. so much for that. Okay. All right. That's great. Uh, Dobby, tell everybody where you are in this big world of ours. I live in Arlington, Texas, which is right between Dallas and Fort Worth. So, um, born and raised in Arkansas, but I've lived in Texas now longer than Arkansas. There you go. Yeah. Land of the big sky, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I love it. I've never been to Texas. I've been to Phoenix, Arizona. That's, and I went in August, which was really oh, bad I'm time. Sorry. I know. Nobody told me. Oh. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm from yeah. Canada. Yeah. Right? Oh, Lord. Yeah. That was a rude awakening. Melting. I, yeah. I melted. So. Yeah. The summer, um, I think, was yeah. either our third or fourth hottest on record. It was really hot this summer. So, wow. yeah. Sometimes I'm, uh, here while I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, so you're part of Char Murphy's newest book. Yeah. I would love to know how you and Char met. How well, did you ever meet Char? Well, she and my husband went to school together and had not seen or talked to each other in a while, but they reconnected on Facebook, as many of us have. You know, once you grow up and go to college and move away from home, it's hard to keep in touch with everyone. But Facebook has been an amazing way for people to get back together. And so Shar and James reconnected. And when... She saw some of the posts that James uh, had posted about the journey that I went through. She reached out to him and said, hey, do you think that your wife would be willing to talk to me? And so I did. And here I am. I, like I said to, to several people, I never, ever in a million years thought I would write anything that would be published. Um, and I don't have a good imagination to do a fictional book, but I can tell my story. and. 
hopefully I can help others by doing so. Yeah. There's something special about Char Murphy. I don't know. It's just something about her Yeah, that she, when I first heard her story and, and listened to her explain a little bit about what's happened in her life. Yes. I just shook my head. I'm like, I, it's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. With all of the challenges that she has overcome, and yet she still has such a great and positive outlook. And it's not just trying to be a better person. She is trying to help others, which is what I admire so much about her. And you're part of a, you're part of a new community now of authors. Yes. Uh, I've heard from the other authors for book two and book one uh-huh. that a community is being built up. Yes. And you have interaction with each other. You have you have access to each other as authors. Yes. How, do, how does that feel for you to kind of be a part of this new family? Incredible. <laughs> uh, indescribable because it's also new and so different. Um, but to be connected and to talk to others and to encourage them and thank them for their assistance and their support is just an incredible opportunity, one that I never, ever thought would come my way. So. I can't thank Shar enough for connecting and allowing me to tell my story, which I hope will help others. It's amazing. Congratulations on being part of the book. It's well, great to have you a part of the family of Mission Hope. And speaking on behalf of Shar, uh, thank you for contributing and being part of this great right. piece of work. It's just, it's awesome. So, it is. The, the first book, I can't tell you how many times I cried reading with each story because each chapter is from a different author telling about the the challenges that they've faced in their life and how they've overcome it. So it, anybody who is out there listening and has not read the books, get get the books, read them, never, ever give up. Find your why. Why do you want to keep fighting? For me, it was my family. Um, yeah. My husband and I have been married for 44 years, so the big 45 is coming up soon. Nice. Congratulations. Yes. We've got three kids and six grandkids, and they're my life. So um, they're my reason to keep fighting and keep 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 on, never quit, no matter what circumstances come your way. Awesome. Okay, so let's jump into your chapter. I'm excited to have a conversation around this. Tell us the name of your chapter. And let's kind of dive in a little bit to your story. I'd love to unpack this for the listeners. Okay. Well, my chapter is called Miracles of Faith. And my family, my friends um, have supported me in incredible ways. And God has literally carried me through the, the poem Footprints in the Sand. God carried me through the roughest times. And I... In 2002, my husband had to have a double bypass, and four months later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So it was a heck of a year for us. Um, But his double bypass was successful. Um, My breast cancer was luckily stage zero, ductal carcinoma in situ, which means that the breast cancer has stayed inside the milk duct and not spread out into the breast tissue. So I had a lumpectomy and didn't get a clear margin. So they did a second lumpectomy, and they did get a clear margin, and then six and a half weeks of radiation. The radiation was the toughest part of that whole thing, because back then, radiation truly burned your skin. And so it would be like going out all day on the boat and not having any sunscreen on, and then going out again the next day and the next day, and you burn and peel and burn and peel. And it was absolutely miserable at the time. Um, but the doctor had some medication that helped with that, a, a specific burn cream, and that lessened the pain until the skin grew back. But uh, And the radiation does an amazing job of pretty much sucking all the energy out of your body. Um, so that took a little bit of time to recuperate from. The, the scariest part to me was just hearing the words, you have cancer. And if you can relate the the Snoopy cartoon that we all watched as kids when the teacher talked, all you heard was wah, wah, wah. Well, once she said the word cancer, I didn't hear the rest of what she said because all my brain was processing was, oh, my God, I have cancer. And to many, 
breast cancer can be a death penalty. I was blessed that it was not. Um, mine was a fairly easy um, journey at that point. Um, but radiation can cause different types of cancer further down the line. So you want to get to that five years. They tell you if you can get to five years, your chances of cancer coming back are much less. So I passed the five year and was so thrilled. And then the 10 year and the 15 year. And the year that I celebrated 15 years cancer free, it came back. And I went to the doctor because I had some swelling under my arm. And they say that can be lymphedema. And I'd not had any lymph nodes be removed with the first journey. But, uh, and this was not anything to do with lymphedema. But while I was at the breast cancer doctor to check things out, I told her that I said, can you look at this? Because right where your breast meets your chest, this little hole had opened up and started oozing blood. And she said, now that I'm concerned about. And the first time I had breast cancer, we lived in Kansas City, Missouri, and now we're in Dallas, Fort Worth area. So I didn't have any of my doctors, hadn't had to go back to the doctor for several years. So um, in getting a new doctor, they tell you, you know, we'll see you next month. Well, when you're worried about having cancer, a month is a long time away. But we got in, we went to see her and she said, well, we need to do a needle biopsy. So I thought that, you know, another two or three weeks, they'd schedule the biopsy. Nope. She took me right down the hall, got me on a table and did the needle biopsy right then and there. So I was surprised and, and pleasantly surprised with that. Um, and a needle biopsy was not pleasant, but, you know, getting an answer sooner was my goal. So away we went. And I got a call three days later at work, answered my cell phone because I saw it was the oncology office. And they said, you have invasive breast cancer. Well, the first time with just cancer was not so pleasant, but invasive means it had spread. So it was out into the breast tissue. So got to see the doctor again the following week. And they said, because it's invasive and is spread out into the breast tissue, this is stage one but we need to do an MRI and get some more diagnostics. So I went and had the MRI done and went back the following week. And they said, it's the tumor is larger than we thought, and it's growing more aggressively than we thought. So I was officially considered to have stage two. Not my best news, but still very treatable. So then I would knew that I was going to have to have chemo and a mastectomy and probably radiation, but we started with chemo first. So I had to go the following week and have a port implanted so that they could put the chemo in. And while they were in there and I was under anesthesia, they took out what's called the sentinel lymph node, which is the top of the chain of lymph nodes underneath your arm going down into your chest. And they wanted to get the sentinel node and the one next to it. Well, they took four, not meaning to, but they were so swollen and clustered together that they realized as they did the biopsy of those that there were four and they were all jam-packed with cancer. So that moved me to stage three. So in three weeks, I had gone from stage one to stage two wow. to stage three. Wow. Very scary, um, yeah. whole cancer realm. Uh, the following week, I had to go for a PET scan to see if it had transferred to any other organs. And thank goodness it had not. So I got to stop at stage three. Quite, quite good news when you're looking at stage four, which is the scariest mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. So I started my chemo right away. And that in and of itself is not a pleasant journey. There, I had what they called a chemo class. So one of the nurses there went over all of the different side effects that chemo can cause. And she said, you might have one or two, you might have 10, you might have 20. It kind of depends because everybody reacts differently. And I had what they call a chemo cocktail of four different chemo drugs. So, um, Every three weeks, you go and let them pump poison in that is there to kill the cancer cells, but it also has other adverse effects, as you've yeah. seen other people that have lost their hair. I actually mm -hmm. tried something called chemo cold caps. Amazing thing. Um, I have hair that's almost down to my waist, and I did not lose it. Um, 
It was amazing. Yes. Oh. Um, looks like, do you remember Jiffy Pop popcorn that you did yeah, on the yeah, stove yeah. top and it yeah. pops up and it's silver? That's yeah. pretty much what I looked like. <laughs> So it was a unique thing, but there are the route that I went, I would go and get dry ice the day before my chemo and you put the caps in dry ice to get them super cold, like below zero, um, about 35 degrees below zero when you put it on. So remember when you eat something cold and get brain, brain freeze? Yeah, yeah. You get brain freeze for about nine hours. <laughs> Not the most pleasant thing, again, but I kept my hair. It was amazing. Um, you have to have somebody there with you because it's pretty much they're working all day to keep the coldest cap ready to go on, and you trade them out about every 20 minutes. So it was a process. <laughs> my oldest daughter, who lives about 15 minutes away with me, went and was my chemo cold cap champion. There you go. Yeah, and she had scheduled a day off for each of my chemo sessions, but at one point, my blood counts were so low, we had to change a date, and she wasn't able to go. And I have an amazing group of friends that were, again, champions and friends and angels here on earth that between my family and my friends, they got me through every bit of this, along with the Lord carrying me through. But uh finished the chemo on December 31st, 2018, and so I'm a few years out now. Um, I just had my checkup with my oncologist on Wednesday of this past week, and she said, you're officially five years cancer-free from when we started all of this process. So it's uh, nice to hit the five-year mark, and uh, we'll hopefully keep celebrating many more. After I finished my chemo, we did the olympectomy to make sure that they had gotten all the center part of that cancer we had, so then I started radiation. It was a couple of weeks into radiation when one of the side effects of chemo came calling, which was peripheral neuropathy, which means pain and tingling in your hands and feet. And uh, if you have crossed your legs for too long and you go to stand up and you have that pins and needles feeling, that was my hands and feet all day, every day for a while. And so they said to take B-complex vitamins, which I did and kind of didn't help at all. But then, weirdly enough, I ended up with tingling in my cheeks, my face, then my scalp, then my neck, then my shoulders. It just kept marching through my body. And every day I'd call the oncologist office and say, hey, this is what's tingling today. Well, after like the third day, they sent me for an MRI of my brain. That was scary because they thought that either I had the brain, the, excuse me, breast cancer had metastasized into my brain or that I had multiple sclerosis, neither of which would be a great outcome. But luckily, neither one of those was my diagnosis. And, but they were scratching their head and she had a friend who was a neurologist and she called every day going, okay, this is what they're saying now. So they did heavy metal testing, kind of weird, but nope, wasn't that. But they did tell me if I had trouble breathing or swallowing, I needed to go to the ER. So went to the ER and the ER doctor redid pretty much every test that I'd already done. But they did them again to see if anything new popped up. Nope, still scratching their head. So I got admitted to the hospital and an angel of a doctor came in, a neurologist. And most doctors at the hospital you see for maybe three to five minutes, if that, yeah. and kind of pop yeah. in, sign off. See you tomorrow. But he sat in my room in the little chair for guests for an hour asking questions because my oncologist was afraid that whatever was going on, the chemo had brought on. And he, after answering questions for or asking me questions for an hour, said, I'll be back tomorrow. And when he came back the next evening, he, he said, I went home and studied for two hours trying to figure out what's going on. And I don't have it yet, but I have more questions for you. So he's narrowing down his scope of possibilities. So another hour's worth of questions. So the third day he came back and he said, I did two and a half hours of research last night. So this gentleman has worked all day in the office and then spent time, a good three, three and a half hours of his day trying to figure out what's going on. And that's very unusual for a doctor. 
And uh, the third day, he told me he thought he had it narrowed down to kind of the family of what it could be. But he needed to do some testing in his office because the hospital didn't have the necessary equipment. So once I was discharged from the hospital, I called and got an appointment and went to his office and they put little sticky tabs all down my left arm and left leg and put electricity into those and measured what my body picked up on. And it only got about 25% of those electrical signals to my muscles, which of course is why I was not moving so well. Um, because as, as the tingling went through my body, I was losing the ability to do my normal everyday activities. Um, you know, picking up a coffee cup and bringing it to your mouth to drink. Was you know, I ended up with coffee all down my front several days, dropped and shattered a coffee cup. So we went to metal cups after that. And uh, then I ended up walking with a cane and then on a walker and then in a wheelchair. And every day I lost more and more ability to move. And uh, so he came in and used the long, thin needles like he would use for acupuncture and actually put those needles down into my muscles. and. Again, I only responded to about 25% of those. So he said now he is really sure that I need to see a muscular neurologist, which I'd never heard of, but thankfully they had one in their group. So I saw him the next week and he diagnosed me with chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, which is a really long name to say that your body has an autoimmune disorder that attacks and destroys the protective covering of your nerves, which is called a myelin sheath. And as my body attacked and destroyed those, I lost more and more and more to the point where I was paralyzed from the neck down. So my sweet husband has should have the Husband of the Year Award for <laughs> all of 2018 and all of 2019 and most of my life. He's a treasure. Yeah. Um, we've been married 44 years and I thank God for him every day, but, mm. uh, he's one of the good guys that in sickness and in health and he took wow. it very amazing. seriously. Yes. And the one thing I'm picking up on is your, your admiration and your gratitude to your community. Oh gosh. Your family and friends. Yes. We're um, going to talk to Shara was. in a minute, but I'd like for you to talk to your community. Because they're going to listen oh. to this episode. Yes, they will. And they're going to hear your voice. And I want, again, I want to kind of get out of the way. And if you could talk to your community, they're all gathered around you in this moment to hear this episode. And they've been in your home. They've been with you. They've been in the hospital with you. They've been with, right beside you through this journey. Every what do you step. want to say to your community? What do you want to say to them? Thank you. Thank you. And a million more times. Thank you. The love and care that each one of you have shown me is way above and beyond. Um, you've been there for me every day, every hour. There are times that it's hard to get through the day when you're facing some of the challenges. And you were there by my side, encouraging me every step of the way, being there for me, bringing meals, helping with laundry, going to the grocery store, all of the practical things that I couldn't do any longer that I wanted to do. I just no longer had the ability to do those. Um, being there, hugging, telling me I'm here for you meant so much because there's some people that I've talked to that they didn't have that community. One of my friends from years ago, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and her husband just threw up his hands and said, I can't deal with this and walked out when you really needed him the most. He walked off and left you and your children. And so I know how blessed I am to have such an awesome community, husband, children, grandchildren. When I was in a wheelchair, the youngest was, gosh, for, so he would have been two years old, never thought twice about that wheelchair. He just climbed up in my lap and chattered away because I'm his Grammy. He didn't realize what was going on. Um, and in his eyes, I was still Grammy, no matter how slurred my speech was or the fact that I couldn't wrap my arms around him and hug him. He still wrapped his arms around me and said, I love you, Grammy. Nice. Yeah. So thank you to all of you. 
you are angels on earth and your love and your support help carry me through this. It's amazing. And that love continues, which is great. It doesn't just end. Oh, no. You're right. It's always there. It's always there. Yes. Yeah. um, So for your chapter in the book, for somebody coming to your chapter for the first time, they turn to your, they turn the page and here's the beginning of your chapter. Before they read one single word of your chapter, what's your message to the reader that's going to read these words that you wrote in Char's book? What do you want them to know about the chapter before they read it? Is there any information that you can give the reader before they actually start the journey of reading your chapter? Find your why. Why do you want to survive? Choose that and keep fighting every day. Never quit. Never give up. And know that there is a community out there. It might not be the ones that you had. Find that community. Find the reason. If you need help, reach out to me. Um, It is amazing the things that you can do with determination and fight. It was a long, ugly fight, but I'm still here. I am walking, talking, back at work full time, playing with my grandkids. I have six grandsons. They're amazing. That 19, 17, twins that are 14, 10, and 6. So we have a broad range of ages, but uh, they're amazing. Our oldest grandson is a Marine fixing to ship out and... <laughs> yeah. Wow. I know. So I can see I can see for those who can't see and only hear our voices, I see the pride. Oh yeah. How proud you are just speaking about your family yep. and your husband. It just radiates from you that just there's love. Love that you're giving back to them while you're speaking. So yes. for you listening at home or wherever you are, uh yeah, it's this this moment that I love I love this this moment with guests is hearing the story and seeing the passion yes. behind the words. Well, yeah. I am blessed. I was raised with a great family. You know, you grow up and you think your family's normal and then you see some others and you go, are we really normal? Yes, mm. we are. Got a yeah. great mom and dad. My mother's no longer with us. Lung cancer took her. And my, my dad had just celebrated his 89th birthday. Nice. I've got three brothers. Like I said, my kids, my grands, it's amazing. Nice. I'm blessed. And I have such a great extended family and friends. So gather your group, as my daughter calls them, her tribe. <laughs> yeah. Gather them together and you can fight anything together. So the leader of this tribe for Mission Hope is the amazing Shar Murphy. Yes. We talked about this before we hit record, and this is this is that moment where I am going to remove myself from the podcast. I'm still <laughs> going to be here, but yes, I'm going to leave and Shar Murphy's going to take my seat here on camera with you. And I'm not here. Okay. Dave's left the building. Yes. Shar's here. And I want to just turn the podcast over to you and, and give you the opportunity to, to address Shar directly and whatever you want to say to Shar, because she's going to listen to this. I know she's going to cry. Sorry, Shar. But I want Shar to know the impact of being part of the book, of being part of Shar's world, what that means to you, and any message you have directly to Shar. So, what would you like to say to Shar? Bless you, Shar. Bless you for bringing your hope, your positivity, the calling that you have to bring all the authors together to tell our stories, to be able to help others, because each one of us has gone through a different challenge, a different road bump in your life. And, you know, how we get through those will be such a huge help to others. And, being able to find all of that in one book is amazing. And the fact that you filled one book and now a second book, and I think there are plans for a third book coming soon, that you have been able to find people who are willing to pull out the hardest days that they have lived through and write and have all those emotions and all the the hopes and plans and things that we've made it through 
and the ability to tell our story to help others because there are so many people out there that need to hear these stories and know that others have gone through either the same thing or something similar and that our stories and our faith and our hope, our willingness to fight and keep going hopefully will help others. And some of the details might be a little different in what one of us has gone through, but in one of these stories, you're going to find something that will help you. And hopefully each of these stories will lift you up and encourage you and give you the hope. And you are amazing for bringing us all together. And I personally thank you because when I meet someone, um, like I recently was introduced to someone that is a fairly new employee in my office, and she was just diagnosed with breast cancer and is going to be starting chemo. And I could tell her my story and that even though I had stage three, where she's stage two, they're a little bit different journey and and. The medications are a little different, but to tell her that I am here for you, here's my phone number, call me any time of day or night, but there is life after this. Find your why, fight. I will go to chemo with you. I will go to radiation with you, anything that you need. And I can tell that one individual one at a time, but the fact that Shar brought all this together my hope is that my story will encourage women that I've never met before and that men can be diagnosed with breast cancer as well. One of my good friends at work just lost her brother to breast cancer, which is not something that you think you would hear, but it made such a huge impact on her family that it was her brother was diagnosed, not mom, not her. It was her brother. And because men don't go get mammograms by the time that he had an issue that he went to the doctor for, it was too late to to save him. So anybody that can get out there, get tested, go get your treatment, fight, there is life after this. And a few practical things, take someone with you to every appointment. When the doctor starts talking and tells you all this information, it is information overload and your brain shuts down. You can't process it all. So take notes or with the technology we have now today, you can ask the doctor, can I record this so that I can go back and understand what you told me once I've kind of absorbed this? Um, Also, my doctors here were phenomenal and gave me medications before I ever got started. Nausea medication for if you had vomiting, um, antidiarrheal if you had explosive diarrhea, um, what they call magic mouthwash if you get mouth sores. I had prescriptions for every one of those things before I ever started chemo. Um, So ask for those um, practical things. If you know somebody who's going through any kind of a health challenge, don't say, just call me if you need help. Take them a meal, go mow their lawn, go to the grocery store for them, call them. I'm at the store now. I'm already here. What can I pick up and drop off for you? Things that you just, you know, can I come over and clean your house or do your laundry? Um, And most women don't want somebody else in their house if it's not perfect. Get over that. Let somebody come help you. You're going to need that help. And there is an army of people out there. There are uh, groups that will come and clean your house, like housekeepers that will come and clean your house for free if you're going through chemo. So reach out, find those avenues, find the help and keep fighting. God has plans for you. Wonderful plans for you. Dobby, it's so great to hear, to hear your thoughts and your encouragement for those listening. And I think there's going to be a lot of value in this episode. You talk about being part of the book and being able to share your message yeah. that way. But now this is another avenue being on a podcast. Yes. We have people listening to us in Africa, in India, wow, around the world. That's awesome. So your reach just got a little bit bigger in addition so- to all the great thing that Shar is doing. Um, people now hear your voice. And what the beautiful thing is, if they don't have a copy of the book in their hand, they could be in the waiting room. They could have earphones, little earbuds in their ear. No one knows what they're listening to. 
but they're listening to this conversation and they're about to go in and get some news that's going to change their the trajectory of their life. Mm-hmm. But before they go in, they hear this. They hear your voice. They hear your story, which gets them in a mindset that this can be beaten, it sure that can. there is opportunity, there's life, right? And there's yes. inspiration in a story that only you can tell through a book, through being on a podcast, whatever that is, your story can help so many people. So the mm-hmm. fact that you have time to do this with us oh. on the podcast is amazing. So for a first time guest, I got to say, you you know exactly what you're doing. And um, this is an episode, I think, again, I've mentioned this in other situations, but this is an episode you need to listen to more than once. Aww. There's a lot of information in here that can help somebody, can yeah. save somebody's life. That's my hope is that. I think that that's why I'm still here so that I can help others. Yeah. 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 Um, Debbie, if there's some way, if there's somebody that would, they're listening to this, yes. who does want to speak to you, who does want to reach out to you, is there any way that we can contact you or continue the conversation after this? How do we do that? Um, send me an email. Okay. My email is Dobby, D O B B Y dot James, J-A-M-E-S, at yahoo.com. And in the subject matter, put speak to you about Mission Hope. Okay. And And you'll know. Monday through Friday are a little busy with work and other things, but I will get back to you by the weekend, hopefully sooner. But if there is a way that I can help you, if there is any information that I can give you, please reach out. Awesome. And to that doctor that sat in your room oh, and asked those me. questions. Thank you he to that doctor. Johnson. Yeah. Dr. Jerome King. He's amazing. There, we go. there you go. Thank you, Dr. Jerome. Um, thank you, Dobby, for being part of this. Again, Char, thank you for making this even possible. Yes. Uh, that I get to have Dobby on my screen. Um, you've inspired me. And I, again, I hope many people find some joy and some life in our in our words today. So, Dobby, thank you for doing this. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Awesome. You made this easier than I thought it would be. I thought I would be a nervous wreck. <laughs> you did great. Oh, thank you again. Okay. <laughs> hey, just jumping on here at the end. Thank you so much for checking out this episode, Living the Next Chapter, talking about Mission Hope Volume 2. You definitely want to pick up a copy of this book. Head over to our missionhope.com our O-U-R missionhope.com all the information in the show notes get a copy of this book get one for yourself get one for your best friend and let's encourage these authors as they write and share their stories with us if you want to connect with me my name is Dave livingthenextchapter.com livingthenextchapter.com I would love to have you Reach out through the website. Let me know what you think of this episode, what you think of the podcast. And let's encourage our fellow authors and let's do something great. Thank you for being here on the podcast. Again, it's the second book from our great friend, Char Murphy, Mission Hope, Inspirational Stories of Faith and Triumph at OurMissionHope.com. Thanks for being here. Catch you on the next one.